Yes, you can. You can create a wonderful masterboard in under 30 minutes. Hi, I'm Creative Katie Karen Birchall. Welcome to my channel. So I am creating on 11 by 17 copy paper, regular copy paper. If you don't have this size to do a masterboard, you can get two pieces of copy paper and do the same thing on both of them. There you're creating once and you have lots of paper to in which to use. Now a masterboard is an artist creative, created collage paper that you typically turn into multiple makes you use for different purposes. And there's lots of ways of doing them. I like mixing paints and collage. So these numbers, I picked an old typewriter font and I blew them up. I love the larger scale of them. I like how it shows through. So you could do that with words that you type up or just random letters. The idea here is to add pattern to the background. Now, because a master board is going to turn into multiple makes, at this stage, I don't know what I'm going to use it for. So I'm going to put some of the numbers going horizontally and some going vertically, and that just gives me options. But remember, this is just about pattern and I'm ripping off straight edges. I'm not a big fan of them. Now a master board is a great time to experiment and do something, a different technique, use something that you haven't used yet or you haven't used in a while. It's very much no risk. So now that I have enough of these papers, I'm just going to glue them down with my Fluid Matte Medium. I like using the Liquitex brand. I buy a larger size and you can get it cheaper that way. And, you know, always look for those sales. But you can use whatever adhesive you like best. I'm putting it underneath and I'm putting it on top. Now my copy paper is raw. I did not gesso it or anything. You could gesso it and that would open up the possibilities for different techniques. Make creating a master board is a great thing to do when you're stuck, when you don't know what to create. I find that it always opens up the creative juices. It's something I don't have to overthink. I just start. And with this one, the only thing that I knew was that I, the color scheme that I was going to use. I wanted to use orange, quinacridone magenta, and yellow. I'm in the warm tones. Now I have this rice paper and I'm gonna use that rose, that focal image, but all this wonderful script that's around it and music notes, I'm not going to waste that. I'm going to put this down on the master board and it's going to give me added interest in my background. So again, I'm just ripping it and gluing it down. There's something really therapeutic about ripping papers and just gluing it down. So if you have script or music from napkins where you've cut out the focal image, or um, rice paper like this, collect them in a bin. And then when you do a master board or on a page, you can just add it to that page. Nothing needs to go to waste. Just because I'm not using it in its entirety as the rice paper, doesn't mean that it I can't use it and benefit from it. 
Now I've kept this video in real time because outside of extra dry time, which there is when you apply wet medium, the matte medium here, there is drying time. I mean, you can speed it up with the heat tool, which I do. You can also do a masterboard over time. One day you might just glue the numbers on. The next day, and then you have it sitting there, you pull it up and you add one more piece. And each layer, you just add it over time. Lately, I've been really doing a lot of Christmas stuff and I was just tired of Christmas. So I just wanted to do something very different. Now, when you're collaging any kind of collage papers, this could be gel prints, this could be pieces of napkin, this could be old book paper, music papers. So now that everything is dry, I'm going to add some texture. And I'm using this Festive Flowers stencil and I'm rubbing thickened, thick gesso through one part of this stencil. Now here's where I'm experimenting. I have yet to do anything with this stencil and I look at it and I lo I'm loving some of these motifs on it. And I thought, you know what, now's the time. And as soon as you start putting mediums through a stencil, you get a better idea of the potential of the stencil. Sometimes you can't tell just by looking at it how wonderful it's or what it's going to look like. So I'm just moving around and pushing the thick gesso through the stencil using that one motif, a couple motifs. There's some bigger dots. This is going to add texture to it, which will take the color mediums differently than the raw paper when we get to that stage. Now I warn you, this is not a precise technique in that it kind of squishes under, it's not going to give you that perfect stenciled effect but that's not what I'm going for. I want this to give some slight pattern, but I want texture that I can bring out or not bring out more in the later steps. Don't be afraid to turn your page and mix it up, especially when you're making a masterboard because you don't know how you're going to use it and what orientation you're going to have. Now this thick gesso takes a little bit longer to dry and I want to make sure that it's completely dry, really well dry, before I add anything, any wet medium like the paints. Because then it'll, it kind of falls apart once it gets wet. So you got to make sure it's completely dry. Once that's dry, I decide that I'm going to use this Liquitec Basic Fluid Acrylic Black with a makeup sponge and do some stenciling on this background. I wanted some darker or larger black images. 
I am going to apply color at a later stage, but the black will show through those colors because I know the colors that I have are semi-translucent. They're not completely opaque, so they're, you're going to be able to see whatever's in the background. And I'm using the same motif that I put some of the gesso through. And again, I'm not worried about making this perfect. I'm putting some of the images off the page, some of them fully on, and I'm layering it on top of what's already there. I'm not worried about what's underneath. Right now we're building the layers. Now this is a flower, but I think I might be turning it into a butterfly. I have an idea. Stay tuned. I'm absolutely loving this black and white background collage paper that I've created, this masterboard. And you can see that it's not perfect. Some of the paint is squishing through. It just grunges up this background. It's perfection in its imperfection. I'm going to use this stamp. I got this from Dollar Store. I'm not sure if it was Dollar Tree or Dollarama, but I love this heart stamp. You could easily use Fun Foam and make one of your own. And I'm putting on that fluid acrylic paint with the makeup sponge and then just stamping in twos or three lines and I'm going vertically and I'm going horizontally I'm just kind of mixing it up every time you add something it pushes everything that's behind it back and that's how you develop those really interesting layers I had no intention at the beginning of doing so much stamping or so much black and white. But once you get started, the page seems to take off on its own. I just look around, what do I have, and grab something that's within arm's reach. So I absolutely love this black and white. So I took a minute and I copied both sides of it. 
I think this would look wonderful if I print this on tissue paper and use it as collage paper. I've got a couple ideas. So again, stay tuned. So, but my original plan was to colorize this one. So I'm going to stick with my original plan, but by photocopying, I can do plan B as well. So I'm going to get out some paint, the orange. Now I picked Naples yellow, but I end up using cadmium yellow. And you can see what I mean about this being translucent paint. I went over it, but you can still very easily see everything behind it. It doesn't block it out. The Naples yellow is more opaque. It's been cloudy and rainy here on Vancouver Island, and I think I just wanted to brighten it up. I think that was part of my selection of the colors. So I'm just going to apply the colors with a makeup sponge, block and blend where wet on wet. So there I'm adding the cadmium yellow, and it's just really brightening it up a little bit more. And you can see when I go over what I gessoed, that shows up differently. You see that pattern differently. So I'm just mixing the yellow with the orange, the orange with the pink, the pink with the yellow. And every time you mix them in different combinations, you get different tones of the color. And that just builds a lot of interest into your background. If you don't like these colors, you could have done everything the same with the black and white and pick a totally different color scheme. Do green, blue, and yellow. Purple, teal, and blue. It would be interesting to photocopy this, the black and white part, and then do one with different color schemes, just to see how they're the same and how they're different. Hmm. Maybe that'll be another video. So there's the cadmium yellow. It's just a little bit brighter. Now, while I want these colors to mix, I also want to make sure that I have some areas that are yellow and some that are pink. And I'm layering up. I can add more layers of that color, add more pink on top, more orange to increase the vibrancy of that color. It's not done till I think it's done. If I had gessoed the copy paper first, the paint would go on and blend easier. Now the reason I'm using copy paper is a lot of times I use my master boards as an Insta background and I glue it on top of the mixed media paper in my art journal and I don't want to have extra thick paper. But you could do a master board on tag board or on mixed media paper. Depends what you're going to use it for. You could even put it onto tissue paper. And here I'm just building up the colors. Yum. Oh. Color therapy in 30 minutes. Now, when I had the black and white master board, I could have done the three colors, these three colors on half of it, and done the other half with a different color scheme. <laughs> it 
Excuse me. What's your favorite color combination? Share it with me in the comment section below. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. There will be a video coming soon where I show you what I do with at least some of this master board. But it could be ATCs, iCADs, I could turn it into journal pages, turn it into a mini zine. The possibilities are endless. Then I decide I want to brighten this up a little bit, lighten it up. So this is a sink liner and I'm applying white acrylic paint to it randomly and just using it as a stamp. I love these DIY mark making tools that I can use on my gel plate or use as stamps right on to master boards or on art journal pages. And you'll notice as soon as I did that, the black stenciling that I did was pushed back. It became less scene. I was playing with the idea of bringing out some of the texture, but eh, decided not to. This is some shelf liner, another wonderful mark making tool. And again, I'm using white acrylic paint. I'm just applying it and using it as a stamp. So this had so, so, so many layers. Collage papers, stenciling, stamping, more stamping in different colors. Creating a master board is a great way to spend 30 minutes. So there are some close-ups of the finished master board at the end. Like I said, there will be videos coming where I'm going to take this master board and turn it into 
at least one project, maybe more. Until next time, I hope you give them at this color scheme a try. I hope you give some of the tips and tricks that I showed in creating this masterboard a try. And be sure to come back and let me know how it goes. Until next time, go get creative.